welcome, one and all. Here we are, it is Wednesday, and time for some more drawing fun together. So this is the Draw Along Show. I am Kyle Webster, your host. And on this show, we all draw together for a few minutes. Then we do a little bit of art education or maybe a little art game. And then finally, you tell me something that you want me to draw at the end of the show, and I draw it as quickly as I possibly can. And uh, nine times out of 10, it works out. So a little bit of a risk there, a little bit of a uh, sort of gamble, which can add some excitement to the show, right? Yes, of course. So hope it's uh, warming up for those of you in the United States. Hope you're having a good time with the weather. Uh, here it's very beautiful, very lovely. And the animals are coming out. The animals are out and about. Speaking of uh, animals, how come you can never see what a pig writes? They're always using invisible oink. Mmm. <laughs> The jokes just get worse, folks, I tell you. I think I gotta find the new joke book, something like that. Anyway, I hope you're gonna bring with you something to draw for this show. This is important because I want you to draw along with me step by step for the you draw it portion of the show. Now this could be a pencil, could be a crayon, a marker, or uh, could possibly be a porcupine quill that you recently acquired, don't ask me how. And you could dip that in some invisible oink and you could draw with it. Okay, let's say hi to some folks in the chat while you're getting your materials ready, and then we'll kick off the draw along. I see Afroha is here, RB is here, and Megan, hello, hello. Fabio is here, nice to see you, Fabio. Buongiorno. And uh, I see Golden is here, nice to see you as well. Uh, Mercurial and Mary, hello everybody, thanks for joining me. It's time for us to do some drawing. To do these drawings, you have to be able to do Three simple things, okay? They are a straight line, all right? And <laughs> look at that color I've got there. It's really faint. Let's try that again. Much better, okay? Some of you might have thought, what's wrong with my eyes? I can't see that line. A zigzag, okay? And a curvilinear line. Could be an S-curve, C-curve. You get the idea. Now, if you can do those simple things, then folks, you can follow along and draw, and I know you can. So let's get started. Now today, we're gonna start with something I don't believe we've ever started with before. And it's a curvilinear line that actually goes all the way from the start point and back. It's called a circle, okay? We almost never draw circles on this show. Now, here's the thing about circles, okay? You can draw them in parts if you like. I'm just gonna go for it, I'm just gonna go like that. Okay, now if your circle doesn't look too circular, don't sweat it, okay? You could do this, you can make a little line, make a little line, come back to this side and kind of like feel your way through until you get something circular. Nobody's gonna judge you for that, okay? Now we're inside that circle. We're gonna wanna do this. A little line here and a little line there. Aha. All right, now up here at the top of the circle, okay? Here's the center. I'm just gonna inch my way over to, I would say, if you're looking at a clock face, somewhere around like between the one and the two. Okay, between the one and the two, something like that. And you're gonna do a diagonal line like that. Okay, see that? You're gonna do the same thing over here. Diagonal line, and this one's gonna be like between the eh, 10 and 11, I guess. Or maybe it's the 11, you know. Kind of make it about the same as the other one, angle-wise, okay? There you go. So far, you've got this little alien head, all right? That's what you want it to look like. All right, now, I'm gonna travel up from this line as if I were following it along, okay? Leaving a little space here, and then I'm gonna make a curvilinear line that stops where this line would intersect with it. See that? This one goes here, that one goes there. All right, we leave a little space in between. Excellent. All right, now we're going to do from here a diagonal line out to about right there. So I want you to sort of look at where the top of your circle is. Imagine dropping down to about where the top of this little line is here, okay? So about there maybe a little higher, all right? And if you want, you can give yourself a little target to aim for. I think that's always a good idea. See that? A little target. And then I just drop it straight down like that. 
Same over here. Give myself a little target right there. Okay, opposite. And remember, we're just doing some symmetry here, right? So this side, this side should, whoops, draw that out a little farther. These should each look about the same, this side and that side, okay? If they're not perfect, don't worry about it. I'm gonna shorten these up just a hair. There we go. Uno de dos. That feels pretty good. All right, now all you have to do here is just pop these back this way, little diagonal, one and two, okay? Following along with this line up to that corner, okay, we're gonna keep drawing it this way and then do the same over here. And all we have to do now is curve a linear line to loop it back. See, that's a C curve like that. And another like that. Ah, what did we just draw there, gang? What is it? It's a piglet. This is gonna be such a cute drawing. You're gonna like this. Now starting from about the center of this line here, this little guy right here, we're gonna draw another C curve and it's going to come down and around to here, okay? And it's not that big, look, just like that. So check out the size of that, measure, okay? And say, okay, how big is that exactly? Think about it and then knock it in, all right? Now, where did I stop? Look at this, did I go all the way down to the center? No, 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 not at all. Stopped right here, just underneath this line right here. See that, where that um, side of the nose is there for the pig, okay? And here, I'm just gonna do a little diagonal line like that, all right? And next to it, I do a little line and then from there, I travel up to there. Same angle. Okay, and then a little scoop following this curve right here. A little scoopity doop right there. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this side. A little line here, up we go. And that's gonna curve around and connect right there, okay? Try and get that a little better. All right, don't worry if it's not perfectly symmetrical, nobody's gonna care, all right? Now out here, to the left of this line, I'm gonna draw another one and stop higher than where that line ends. Same on this side, okay? So one and two, following the same angles of those legs. And all that's doing is helping me communicate that this pig has four legs and he's standing slightly in a three-quarter view with the body, even though the head is facing us directly, okay? And right here, Bow, you pop in a cute little tail. Adorable. Come on. All right, now he's gonna be standing in some mud. How do I do that? C curve, overlap, C curve, independent C curve, okay? In here, one and two. And then again, one and maybe one, two. All right. Do a couple of those little marks, if you like. A couple dots here and there. And that just gives us a nice muddy ground for that little piglet, okay? How do you wanna make this your own? Well, you could add some foliage in the background, some other barnyard animals, whatever you like. You could give the pig, you know, a nice little bowler. Okay, it's up to you, it's your drawing. Customize it, personalize it, make it your own, okay? Excelente. All right, now today we have a new segment for the show called Very Serious Advice. And we're gonna get started with that right now. I'd like to give you some very serious advice from time to time. Advice about art, advice about your, your drawings, the pictures you make, and so on. However, I'd like to do this with funny faces. So don't forget, the advice is serious, the faces are not. Now for today, I'm gonna to talk about inspiration. And something that I often see many art students doing is gathering a lot of inspiration from the internet um, in the form of other illustrations and drawings. Now, I think it's wonderful to look at other artists' work. However, when it comes to your own work, I think the best place to find inspiration is actually not from the illustrations and artwork that others are creating, which can become overwhelming, which can also make you feel less 
sure of yourself because there are always going to be amazing talented people out there creating beautiful images and i would actually recommend that instead of finding your inspiration there you find it in the interests that you have in your own life the hobbies that you have the places you've been the music you like the films you like the friends you have um, the clothes you wear the colors that you just like to look at um, find it elsewhere the inspiration you get from your own life can actually be the best place to get inspiration for your artwork take it from me it has definitely informed my own illustration work my own uh, books that i've written and and drawn and i have to tell you it's a lot better for your ego and for your uh, your self-confidence and also just for your creativity if you find inspiration in your daily life. And uh, instead of just creating Pinterest boards with thousands of images of all the artwork that you admire that other illustrators are out there creating. So that's my very serious advice for you today. And I hope you take it seriously. All right, now it's going to be time for one of our favorite things, which is of course, the old animal and activity game. If you've never seen that before, here are examples from the last couple of weeks. Somebody suggests an animal doing something funny, strange, weird, bizarre, unexpected. For example, this small monkey carrying an enormous cake. Or how about this shark making some food? Okay, so we have the shark cooking up a soup right there. These are just some things people have suggested. And today you got to suggest something fresh, something different, something new, something wonderful. And I will... Oh, sorry, we're being interrupted by a little alarm, which is telling me it is time for Appreciation Station. All right, now, today, my friends, we are appreciating Mary. Mary, hope you can see that. And I just want to appreciate you today and see if you can remember this. That was a long time ago, but it was Lil' Kim's 28th birthday, and I was the DJ. And um, unfortunately, my turntable went on the fritz and then it just blew out and the music stopped and people were getting upset. And uh, then you stepped up in front of everybody and I don't know where this came from, but you just started freestyling some really fresh stuff. I'd say it was chart worthy even. Um, got the party kicked right back up and it went along smoothly. And I remember at the end that you even got a record contract out of that. So not only did you save my skin and save me some embarrassment, but uh, things worked out for you very nicely. So thank you, Mary, for that. And um, I remember that night very fondly. Hope you do too. All right, now it is time to get back to the drawing. And um, I'm gonna look for your suggestions in the chat and we shall see what we draw today. All right, let's see. Already we have some suggestions flying in here. We have a squirrel detective. I like that one, that's fun. Um, we have an elephant dancing the twist. We have a penguin flying a hang glider. We have a brontosaurus playing golf. Very nice. A magician froggy. I love it. And a cheetah playing hopscotch. I think these are all wonderful suggestions, and I've got to think about these. Let's see. I really like this frog magician. That's definitely there in my mind as a, as a contender there. Um... Caitlin, I like that squirrel being a detective. That's fun, too. Um, Steve, good one with the penguin flying a hang glider. Gosh, these are all so good. Can you please hold on to some of these for tomorrow? Because we have another episode tomorrow, and uh, I just like so many of these. We also have an alligator eating a salad. So a veggie alligator. Vegetarian alligator. Um, well, Andre, I don't believe I've seen you here in the show many times before. And I like this magician frog idea, and I would like to draw that. So I'm going to select a light blue color for this right up here. Start with that and just go to this. And as you all know, I like to sketch with light blue. It just makes me feel good. Uh, let's make a new layer. And why don't we get right to it? Now, let's see. I myself, by the way, am an amateur magician. I don't know if anybody knows that about me. Um, but I've been practicing card magic now for 24 years. And um, I actually do take that quite seriously. Done a few performances here and there. And um, 
always carry cards with me whenever I go to a conference or things like that. So someday, if I see you in person, ask me for a card trick and I will gladly oblige. All right, let's see. This uh, frog, I'm thinking about a pose. I'm thinking about how I would make this work. Um, okay, here's my idea. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do this. We're gonna have a top hat. Actually, I'm gonna have the mouth come straight across like this. There we go. Don't frogs have like sideways pupils or something? I always, there we go. That looks so much more froggy. I like that. Okay, so he's got his little hat on. And I'm going to have him in a nice bow tie and coat here. And I'm going to have him um, leaning up, leaning against, or propping himself up with a cane like this. And then this leg is crossed over this leg here. I'm gonna have his shirt, his uh, coat have some some tails. Okay, so we button it here, and then over it goes, and then tails in the back. So kind of tuxing it up here, tuxedo-y kind of deal. Okay, and this hand is going to be flashing a nice fan of cards, okay? make him extra skinny actually I think I think the skinnier he is the better so make sure that he's nice and skinny okay and I think yeah for the legs too the skinnier the better so we're gonna skinny him up there we go Okay. That feels pretty good for me, I think. Um, yeah, I think that'll work. So let's make sure everything works out size wise. I gotta get this get this here and get that there. Try to imagine that leg if it were straight, make sure that it would be the same. Height is the other. You don't want to make that mistake people often make, myself included, of crossing legs in a drawing and having one leg be too much longer than the other. And I've got the hip up here, so it's okay if I measure this down here and take this and split it, should be good to go. But these things matter, okay? Alrighty, so we're going out, in, back, and down here. And let's try and get this completed. So we're gonna use a darker blue right here. We're gonna knock our sketch back, make a new layer, and here comes the line art. So we go one and two, three and four, okay? And 
nice little ellipse right there, ellipse right there. That ellipse didn't work. <laughs> you know, ellipses, what are you gonna do, right? They're such, a, oh, they're the worst. They know it too, don't they? All right, big fat top hat. And skinny little frog neck there. Okay. Come in here. Let me do our little tuxedo coat there. Oh, let's give him some like froggy looking hands. You know, like the much skinnier. I like that better. There we go. I'm actually gonna make these cards bigger so they show better. Um, and I'm gonna fan them out like so. I want you to see clearly this uh, spade shape here. Ace of spades, right? And then I'm just going to come around and do this, like that. The only thing, the only issue here is that I'd have to tuck that ace into the, the palm so it wouldn't fall out, right? There we go. That's better. Oh boy, thank goodness for Command Z. Where would we all be without it, gang? Crying in a corner. There's your answer. And you wrap that down. I'll get to that in a second. First, I want to get these legs drawn here and uh, legs and shoes legs and shoes there we go now we can throw those tails back there for the coat okay And go ahead and draw those other frog fingers back there. And there's our cane. Okay, let's hide that sketch for a minute. See how we're, we're doing here. I think some lines under here won't hurt just to make that a bit more interesting. Okay, a little shadow on the neck, shadow under here, and uh, how about a little pocket square. Let's make that look better. There. I like that. There, my friends, there is our magic froggy ready to perform one of the classic card feats such as Chicago Surprise, could be Chicago Surprise. You don't know. Could be the ambitious card, right? Could be something from Marlowe, could be something from Ed Marlowe, could be from Di Vernon, the great Di Vernon. Look up these names if you like this kind of stuff. I sure do. Um, I love that suggestion. Let's slide our little piggy over here. There you go, Mr. Pig. Um, and that was a really fun day. Hope you enjoyed my very serious advice. Um, Thank you again to Mary for saving the day. 
and I hope you were able to follow the draw along. Please remember these are always archived on YouTube. You can watch them anytime you want. Just search for Draw Along with Kyle, uh, or just Draw Along Kyle, and then uh, you'll find over a hundred episodes of the Draw Along show that you can play back, and uh, you can pause them wherever you want and follow along and draw your favorite stuff. I'll be back tomorrow at the same time, 5.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, 2.30 p.m. Pacific, and Friday is my Illustration Masterclass at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. Hope you'll join me for that as well. In the meantime, everybody take care of yourselves. Take care of each other, and remember to be kind. I'll catch you next time. Ciao for now.